So I wanted to give you the big picture of my research in the first slide. Starting uh, from left to right, our collaborators were securing their large-scale applications on the previous generation of DOE supercomputers, like Cori, and now they want to target the new generation of exascale supercomputers. Um, in the exascale, most acceleration comes from the use of GPUs, so they need to um, extend their codes with GPU offloading. They may want to have different backends, uh, for example, one backend with MPI communications and other backends with GPU offloading. But, you know, to the performance of each backend can be optimized by a set of performance parameters. And these parameters must be adjusted for each platform, for each supercomputer, right? Um, for example, the number of GPU threads. And when there are many parameters, finding their optimal values can be a really um, hard task. Actually, it's one of the most challenging optimization problems. Um, so in my research, we use machine learning for optimizing this search. Um, but there is something else. The new DOE supercomputers, they are based on different vendors. For example, Permatter is, uh, has NVIDIA GPUs, Aurora has AMD GPUs, and Frontier has Intel GPUs. And this is a problem, right? So some people, um, they decide to have only one backend for targeting all these three uh, supercomputers, and they use a portable language like OpenMP, while other people prefer to have a specific um, backend for each vendor. So what strategy does it give you the best performance with the minimum effort? This is something that we want to answer. So performance portability is the ability of applications to perform efficiently across different platforms or supercomputers. And community is struggling with a lot of performance portability questions in the exascale era. Um, for example, if we target NVIDIA GPUs, should we use a portable language like Cocos or should we use CUDA? And if we move to AMD GPUs, should we expect the same performance as with CUDA? Or um, is there any correlation between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs? That's the kind of questions that we want to answer. And indeed, there is, um, in the right, you can see this analysis we ran for a kernel implemented in both uh, CUDA and, and HIP. And we tested different configurations in a similar AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. And we saw this, that most CUDA configurations were, on average, twice faster than the uh, AMD configurations. And this is interesting. So although um, my research can be applied to any scientific workload, we target a specific workload, the density functional theory. The density functional theory is a workhorse in material science and chemistry nowadays, as it helps with you know, understanding the electronic structure and the properties of many materials and molecular systems. And indeed, there is one uh, survey at NERS that show up that 70% of their computation time is spent on DFT codes. And as I said before, the DFT performance can be optimized based on different performance parameters. And we have to find the optimal values for these uh, parameters. And the search space is composed of two um, sources of parameters. The ones that come from the uh, platform, the underlying platform, like the MPI message size, and the ones that come from the algorithmic implementation. For example, if we use Crank Nicholson variant or the Chebyshev variant, or if we use this threshold or this other threshold. So let's say that we have only 10 parameters in total, only 10, and each parameter can take up to 10 different values. We have 10 billion of possible configurations, and we cannot run an exhaustive search of 10 billion of uh, configurations, right? So we have to come up with smarter strategies to find the optimal configuration. So as I said, we cannot run 10 billion of evaluations, and we would like to find the optimal by evaluating only few um, configurations. And in the literature, there are many searching strategies, but only Bayesian optimization is outperforming a random search, a random search sorry, in um, different scenarios. So we say, OK, let's use Bayesian optimization to find the optimal value of these performance parameters for each backend and for each platform. 
And let's do the following performance portability case. We want to move the DFT application from one platform to another platform, right? Let's say that the first platform is Cori, for example. So we ran a Bayesian optimization search in Cori, and it took 893 evaluations to find the optimal configuration in Cori. And now we want to move to Permatter. So we ran a fresh Bayesian optimization search in Permatter, and in this case, it took 918 evaluations to find the optimal configuration. And of course, uh, 918 evaluations is better than 10 billion evaluations, right? But still, even completing one single DFT execution can take several hours. So these are like many computation hours. Is there any way of reducing even more the number of required evaluations somehow? So do we really need to run a fresh search each time that we have a new platform? Well, so thanks to transfer learning, we can reduce even more the number of evaluations. Um, transfer learning is uh, optimization in machine learning that allows you to reuse a previous model in when training a new model. So the training of this new model is accelerated, which means if in our case we use the model we train in the uh, in Cori in platform one during the uh, modeling of the search in platform two, the search in platform two is not starting from scratch. It has some previous information and it accelerates the search. And in this case. Uh, using transfer learning, the search only took 430 evaluations. Uh, from 10 billion uh, evaluations to 430 evaluations is a big reduction, right? And there is only one requirement. The searches have to be similar. In our research, we um, demonstrated that there is a kind of correlation between Cori and Permatter MPI configurations. So we'll, we were able to use this methodology for moving a DFT code from Cori to Permatter. And the same happened with AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. We uh, were able to use this uh, methodology to um, move a DFT code from the Crusher supercomputer to Permatter. So the novelty of this proposal, of this research, is that we use uh, previous or we use performance data from previous platforms to accelerate the search of the optimal values in the new platform with Bayesian optimization and transfer learning. And to the rest of our knowledge, this is the fast way of, of doing this right now. Uh, we developed a transfer learning methodology and a workflow for orchestrating this search. And under the hood, we are using uh, two um, state-of-the-art frameworks for Bayesian optimization, which enables transfer learning. And maybe you're wondering if using transfer learning can introduce an overhead in, in the search, but so far we haven't seen any significant overhead compared to the savings when using the transfer learning modeling of these frameworks. So our first contribution was published in the PMBS uh, workshop the last year, and we targeted an MPI-based um, transfer, oh, sorry, um, density functional theory application, moving this from uh, Cori to Permatter. And in, in this work, we demonstrated that using our transfer learning strategy, uh, which used you know, previous uh, information from Cori for training the uh, Permatter search, it was like uh, half of, I mean, was twice faster than using a regular Bayesian optimization search in Permatter. And in our next uh, paper, which is still under review, we targeted a GPU-based density functional theory application and in this case, you can see in the left that all the variants, the, um, the transfer learning variants, which have this uh, scratched area, all of them uh, took less evaluation to find the optimal configuration. And in the right, you can see that the configurations found, the optimal configurations found by the uh, transfer learning variants also were faster than the ones as, um, founded by the uh, fresh Bayesian optimization search. And I really like this, um, this plot for showing why transfer learning is working so well. So Bayesian optimization is proposing a new candidate to be evaluated in each iteration of the search, okay? In this case, the blue points represent um, the Bayesian optimization, like the conventional one, without transfer learning. 
and you see that they are proposing candidates which are like spread, right? While the orange one is um, the Bayesian optimization with transfer learning that we are proposing, and the suggested candidates here are all of them concentrated in the low execution times, which means like the transfer learning, uh, this strategy with transfer learning is proposing better configurations in each iteration of the search. And that's why it's working uh, well. And for, for offloading, I mean, for getting uh, or leveraging the exascale um, power, we also need to offload the computation to the GPU. Uh, in this case, we are working with our collaborators to um, do this engineering exercise. And the first thing uh, we realize it is in their current DFT codes, the MPI communication is the bottleneck. And GPUs require of massive computation, no communication, right? So yeah, we are working with them to get rid of um, as much communication as possible. And we are offloading some um, kernels to the GPU. And thanks to this, we are able to um, target or to do the execution of larger uh, systems that we were not able before. And this is the last slide. So I want you to keep in mind only one thing from my presentation, and is that the leveraging exascale power is equal to um, using GPU offloading and using performance portability to um, get the optimal values for each um, architecture. So, and we do that in our in my research, right? So, as I said, we are offloading these DFT applications to the uh, GPU, and thanks to this, we will be able to uh, execute DFTs on larger molecular systems. So, we are helping science, but also we are developing this transfer learning methodology. And although right now we have, or so far we have targeted DFT applications, this can be applied to any other scientific workload. So we are helping the scientific community, but we are also helping, or, or the HPC community can also benefit from, from this. If you remember my uh, first slide, where we were asking like, is um, if we target NVIDIA GPUs, uh, is HIP or can HIP get the same performance as CUDA? In this case, no, not always. We have seen that CUDA in our implementation is getting better performance. Is there any correlation between uh, CUDA and AMD um, performance? Yes, there is. And this means that we can use the same configuration between um, AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. No, there is one correlation, but there is no one-to-one um, -one mapping. So you need to run a new uh, search each time that you change. Um, so yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Adrian, for your nice talk. Do we have questions from the audience for Adrian? So how many parameters can you handle with, uh, with this method? OK, so um, this is a good question, because the dimensionality can be a problem when doing these, um, these models. So far, we have targeted, I was like, eight different parameters. Um, but the point is, if these parameters are orthogonal um, between each other, you can run two separate and parallel searches. The problem is when one parameter influence on the performance with the other parameter. And in, in that case, uh, so far, we have run um, up to eight different parameters. And we know that the frameworks we are uh, using, they support up to 15 parameters. Other questions? Maybe online? I, w I wonder, do you have to worry about correctness, that the result is, of the computation is no longer correct in going from one platform to another? Uh, no, because we are not changing the algorithms. We just change the performance parameters. So it would, can take like more time or less time, but the results should, should be the same. We are not modifying the DFT algorithms. We are using the same DFT algorithm, um, but yeah, testing different parameters. The only thing is if the parameters you are testing, if that influence in the result, well, it's more about the scientific side than yeah. in, from our side. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, 
there's no more questions from the audience, let's thank uh, Adrian again for his nice talk.